What's happening, Rob here? How's it going? Back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, another strange thing. Maybe strange to some of you people, not strange to me at all because uh, I've dug these for a long time. Um, <clears throat> that is this right here. What is it? Well, it's a singing bowl. Um, I'll give you a little info on the singing bowl real quick, right here. A little bit about singing bowls, also known as Tibetan singing bowls, Ren gongs, Himalayan bowls, Suzu gongs. They're all a type of a bell, specifically classified as a standing bell. Rather than a hanging or inverted or attached to a handle, singing bowls sit with the bottom surface resting and the rim vibrates to produce sound characterized by a fundamental frequency, the first harmonic, and usually two audible harmonic overtones, a second and a third harmonic. Singing bowls are used worldwide for meditation, music, relaxation, and personal well-being. Singing bowls were hysteric historically made throughout Asia, especially Nepal, China, and Japan. They're closely related to de decorative bells made along the Silk Road from the Near East to Western Asia. Today they are made in Nepal, India, Japan, China, and Korea. Uh, you notice a lot of them in uh, different movies, you know, Buddhist priests, all kinds of stuff using singing bowls. Uh, traditionally a Buddhist practice using a singing bowl, they're used to signal or to begin or end periods of silent meditation. Uh, some people use them to accompany uh, different chanting uh, all types of medica medication, meditation, I should say. And uh, I don't know, they're used in yoga, they're used in music. Uh, being a musician myself, uh, that's one of the reasons I really dig them. They have a, a really cool tone. There's a little info, history, what you want to call it, about the singing bowl. Uh, so, like I said before, this it's a singing bowl. Uh, it's a musical instrument for the most part. Uh, it comes in the shape of a bowl. These can be used as a bowl, presentation bowl, whatever. Uh, you can put food, whatever in them. They have been used for centuries for that. Um, but basically, it's a music musical instrument. Um, typically, when you play one, a small one like this, larger ones, you want to usually you can hold the larger ones, but they're pretty heavy. Uh, usually have them on a pad. If you just set them on the table or something, you got to play them. Uh, the thing's going to start vibrating. It's going to produce a lot of energy and it's going to start moving around the tables and it's going to sound like crap. So you want it on a pad. Uh, if you're going to play one holding it in your hand, you want to hold it flat uh, with your fingers pointed out. If you hold it like this, you're going to mute the sound. It won't have that sustain. That real clear, long sustain is uh, what makes these really cool. And playing them, you're just going to move the mallet around the rim of the bowl. Just like, kind of like, you know, when you see people playing a crystal glass by moving their finger around the rim. Uh, this is the same technique, basically. You want to apply enough pressure to keep it from not bouncing around. And uh, it'll get pretty intense. So that's how you play a singing bowl. Uh, like I say, this is a machined one. Um, really, for me, uh, this one's really super easy to play. And... Uh, the hand hammered ones they're a little bit harder to play but not much um and like i say if you want to think about getting one of these me personally i'll tell you the way i think about it with singing bowls with uh crystals that you see in the background there anything like that anything that i uh consider something that holds energy or produces energy sound anything like that I like to hold it in my hand. I like to feel it. I like to listen to it. Each of these singing bowls, uh, they can be tuned to a different note, uh, different 
vibrational, you know, frequency, uh, depending on the size of them, even the ones say they're all six inches, they can all sound different. So myself, when picking one of these out, I like to go in some place that has them and spend some time in there, listening to them, holding them, letting them talk to me. I know that may sound weird to some people, but uh, just like with crystals, I like to hold them. I like to feel them. Uh, when I go crystal shopping, I don't really necessarily go in there looking for one specific thing. Um, I like to do it intuitively and let that crystal or that singing bowl or something like that tell me, yeah, I'm the one you want. <laughs> so like I say, uh, that may sound goofy to some people, but I, that's me. I'm not out to uh, please anybody but myself with this kind of stuff. So uh, there you go. A little bit about these. These also, like I say, you can get hand hammered ones. You can get antique ones. Uh, you can get modern day machined ones like this one. You can get crystal singing bowls actually made of crystal. Uh, I saw one today. Uh, it was made of quartz crystal and it was pretty insane sounding, filled the entire room with sound. Uh, I played a hand hammered bowl that was probably, I don't know, good 12, maybe 14 inches. And the sound that came out of that bowl was so low and so intense that it was like rattling my diaphragm. It was making me feel really strange but I kept doing it anyways <laughs> because it was a good feeling. But yeah, singing bowls, check them out. Interesting musical instrument, a bowl, cool looking. Uh, use it for meditation, for chanting, for yoga, for a lot of people use them to clear the energy in a room or to produce, you know, to clear negative energy, I should say, and replace it with good energy. So uh, they can be used for all kinds of things, or they can just sit on the shelf and look cool, even at that. Singing bowls. Check them out. There you go. There you have it. I'm out. I will add one more thing. This particular singing bowl came from a store located in Jacksonville, Florida, in the Little Five Points area, right there on Park Street, and it is called Midnight Sun. Uh, i got to give these guys a plug because they were super cool. They let me play every bowl in the whole store pretty much, even though, you know, it said don't touch, don't ding them, don't ring them, ask for assistance. They pretty much let me uh, play every one in there and find the one that I wanted. So, uh Check this place out if you're into anything like singing bowls, crystals, home furnishings, clothing, all kinds of stuff. They got really cool jewelry in there. Uh, I didn't even get to look at the place because I was only in there for a little while today. But <clears throat> yeah, pretty awesome store and an amazing selection of awesome crystals, which is a whole nother story when a whole nother video. So there you go. There you have it. Uh, now I'm really out of here.